You've got one minute, 40 seconds, innovators. That's right. The United States Air Force. You're here with Morpheus on Winning Wednesday, talking wins across the Air Force innovation ecosystem. But today, my friends, we're expanding out well, well, well past what you would say the bounds of the Air Force are. No, we're going to our other federal partners, talking to uh, amazing, amazing individuals who are truly just breaking ground in places uh, that, that, you know, are much like the Air Force, that have had challenges of growing. Excited to be able to have it with us. Michael Kaufman from the FAA. You have one minute. Subscribe, follow, like, share. Excited to be able to be with you here. Winning Wednesday. Yours truly, Trigger Jordan. Excited to be able to be with you and share uh, what's going on across the federal innovation space today. Yes. Now you may say, why are we talking about the federal innovation space? Well, this is important because we have brethren and sister. And I don't know if that's a word. Probably not. Just made it up. Uh, brothers and sisters out there in arms across the uh, the federal space that are really, really, really doing amazing things like this individual right here, truly, Michael Kaufman. I'm seriously, it has been so incredibly cool to get to know him. You got 26 seconds before we're live right here with Morpheus. Stick with us, follow along. I'm telling you, you're not gonna want to miss it today uh, with Winning Wednesday right here, Morpheus, with your strategic innovation team. 14 seconds. Share it along with somebody who needs just a little encouragement today. Those innovators out there who are getting after the good work of innovation. Because it happens. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Winning Wednesday. I'm Trigger Jordan, your host with your Morpheus team, which is your strategic innovation team across the United States Air Force. Right at the edge of innovation. Truly excited to be able to be with you today. If you haven't done it yet, you need to do it. You can go right now, as I mentioned, oftentimes you can head over to uh, YouTube at Morpheus underscore AF dot com. Also, uh, if you have not been there recently, you can uh, go to Morpheus AF dot com as well as to the website to be able to follow along with all the great work that has taken place across the Air Force Innovation Ecosystem. Had some great calls today, honestly, uh, with uh, Liberty Works Spark. They taught me a thing or two about virtual officing. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really awesome. Uh, but having discussions about that, SIF, the Squadron Innovation Funds, uh, and how to be able to best use it, some of the challenges that are out there. Love to be able to hear your feedback uh, because I know that uh, many, many of our airmen and guardians are getting ramped up for the uh, of how to be able to use the innovation funds uh, for this next year. So again, if you have questions, don't hesitate. You can reach out to us right here. Team at MorpheusAF.com is your opportunity to be able to reach out. But right now, you're not here just to be able to get an email. You're here to be able to talk to a pro. And I mean a real pro that I'm truly excited to introduce uh, to you. Uh, through a connection of, of uh, the Spark Network, it got connected with uh, an innovation district down in Oklahoma City and got to know uh, this individual who's just really phenomenal, to say the least. Um, it works for not only the FA, but right here. Look at this smiling face. Look at this. There he is, ready, ready, uh, ready to rock. And the reason why this conversation I think is so incredibly cool is, uh, you know, Michael Kaufman uh, with the FAA Academy, uh, local. Uh, they're in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, in the United States of America, uh, with with a focus of wanting to innovate in in this core basis of what the FAA, the Federal uh, Aviation Administration does. And uh, it's been so cool to get to know you because not only what you're working on, what the FAA Academy is working on, uh, learning about uh, commercial uh, commercialization of space and, and kind of the background that you've had, but really your fellow innovator, just like us in the Air Force, it's just you wear a different badge. Yes. And, you know, first, thank you for this opportunity this afternoon, Trigger. Uh, but yes, this has been a, a beginning of a fascinating journey that, you know, if you talk to the group that I work with in the FA Academy a year ago, we would have never have guessed we were, would be where we're at today with, with this effort. Yeah. Uh, it has taken some unexpected turns, all positive turns, but the more we get into this, the, the more we start to understand some of the challenges that are in front of us and you know some of the ways that we can address these challenges are starting to come somewhat into focus so it's it's an exciting time to be involved with this yeah so so take us to uh 
first, how, because you and I know the conversation, how is it that, that uh, you got into kind of this innovation space? Because initially you were just looking to make improvements to training, which is kind of how everything starts. But would you mind kind of talking us back to, through this process you've been through over the last year uh, of, of this uh, kind of innovation mindset has been birthed? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we're fortunate at the FAA Academy. We're, we're part of a larger complex at the Mike Maroney Aeronautical Center here in Oklahoma City. And part of the Aeronautical Center, um, they do have some programs in place for tenant organizations to take advantage of partnerships with academia. Uh, it, it's called our Capstone uh, Program. And luckily, there's partner universities in Oklahoma that are familiar familiar with the protocol that that program and allowed us easy access to look at different areas of research. So some of my colleagues at the academy decided to start to look at the the workforce of of the stakeholders of the national airspace system. And we started with the uh, commercial space industry just to see what their workforce demographics look like. Uh, how their cultures around training operated to see if there were things that we could learn at the academy from that. And so, you know, the genesis of, of this effort really started with our partners in academia and specifically for us at the academy, uh, we partnered with the University of Oklahoma. The Price College of Business has been a, a phenomenal partner with us in this journey. And mm -hmm. uh, they allowed us to um, have access to both undergraduate and graduate students yeah. that really carried a bulk of this research. So the, the beginning of this really was with academia, uh, looking at uh, the stakeholders of the national airspace system. So uh, that's where we started and uh, that's where we launched from and it's taken many turns since then. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like the making of a great, great innovation story. I, I look, uh, look back to, to my beginning, which was very, my beginning, uh, in, in innovation in the air force. I, I was not intentionally thinking, you know, I wonder if I can get an innovation in the air force, uh, which I think is kind of funny because not a lot of people necessarily start off with that at all. In fact, it's probably a good thing. Most people are just trying to solve a problem that they have or look creatively to the future and say, what can we do? How can we do it? Uh, and then you find yourself in the middle of, of a re either a real challenge or real opportunity, which we'll just call it both. So in partnering with, uh, with uh, the business school, what was it that you were looking for initially? Like what was that partnership uh, that you were looking, uh, looking at initially? And how did that change? Well, we knew that we wanted to cast a wide net. Uh, we knew that the workforce, uh, the younger generations coming into the federal workforce, you know, they have different ways that they, they look at information, different ways of, of communicating that information. So we wanted to learn more about how industry may be addressing some of these challenges. Uh, so really that first semester, which the, the first semester we started this was in the fall of, of 2021. So we're into the third semester now, but that first wow. semester was really casting a wide net to see what maybe areas of focus that we could drill down into in future semesters. And I would say that that first semester was very successful. We, we knew that uh, technology came up high on that list in that first semester about how to utilize technology yeah. to, uh, to start to address some of the um, capabilities of these younger generations coming into to the workforce. Um, uh, at the FA Academy, the technical training we provide is, is the world's best when it comes to uh, aviation safety. We have the safe, safest national airspace system on the, the globe and the most yeah. efficient as well. So we, we do safety very well. But what we want to do is to make sure that we understand these new technologies that are going to be available in the technical training space so that we can leverage them properly and, and even get some efficiencies out of those technologies possibly that we currently do not have. And that young group of, of students that we first interacted with clearly shined the light on that we were looking in the right locations. And we learned so much, just not from the, the research that they were able to provide, but the interactions with those students, we learned a tremendous amount just from building those relationships, communicating with them, learning from them. Uh, it, it was fascinating. And, and you know, I, I tell my colleagues and, 
and uh, leadership at the uh, at the academy, uh, that experience was one of the most profound and, and rewarding of my federal career so far was working with those students. And we're continuing that research to this day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, through one of the, uh, the as you've been uh, working with them, um, you've put me in contact with a couple of them who had questions about AI and AI integration. And it's amazing. I want to take a, a second to just go back because, uh, you know, on Winning Wednesday, we talked about wins across the Air Force innovation ecosystem into different branches of the military, even the civilian sector. How are we learning from the civilian sector? Uh, and one of the things that, that continues to come up over and over again is simply the real, uh, a very simple truth, is that technology has the ability to change how we think about uh, our work, <laughs> how we implement our work, how we implement solutions, how we identify problems. It has the ability to change everything. One of those, which uh, previously we had um, uh, Colonel Don Haley on, who was a commander for uh, ABTOL or, uh, uh, let's see, um, Agility Prime, which is uh, electric vertical takeoff and landing uh, testing and development. And what does that look like for the Air Force? Uh, and that, we didn't talk about it during that session, but one of the things we did talk about, which now comes to light, is the reality that technology is changing the way even that we travel. FAA being obviously the backbone of safety, aviation safety, aerospace safety. Uh, when you think about that, now the introduction of what drones, uh, drone integration, electric vertical takeoff and landing capabilities in the future, you know, commercialized space flight. There's a lot of things, Michael, that are changing in the world around us. And we, right. I don't want to blast past that real quick because that's a major, major focus consideration for, for you guys as you've been sharing. Right, and it's a, it's really a part of this nexus nexus of transformational change that we are are facing, you know, at the FA Academy, and, and really probably as agency as a whole. Um, the the balance of of NASA operations up till this date has you know traditionally been a majority aviation, whether general aviation, commercial, military aviation has always made up the bulk of of NASA operations. Yeah. Because, but as you start to look at some of the projections into the very near future, you know, that balance of, of stakeholder operations in the NASA is going to probably drastically change very quickly. So aviation, traditional aviation, you know, uh, whether it's general commercial military will take a, a smaller piece of that pie as UAS advanced air mobility, uh, commercial space, starts to take up more of that operational space, you know, yeah. and as the academy is dealing with the technical training, uh, we, we train for the uh, different lines of business within the FAA. We've got to understand what those changes mean from a training perspective. You know, the density of NASA operations are going to change. So can technology possibly help out in those areas? Yeah. You know, and you put that on top of the younger generations coming into the workforce, they've always been connected handheld devices in their hand throughout their right. whole educational uh, career. So how do you connect all those dots and maintain the, the world's safest and, and, and most efficient airspace? It's, it's a great opportunity. Uh, it's an exciting time to be part of this transformational change. And um, that's, and we're at the very beginning of that journey. So no telling where this goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you were mentioning that one of the things that came to mind that, that I guess I maybe hadn't thought thought of uh, necessarily really up until kind of this moment is, you know, when we thought about uh, technology integration, most of the time we think about technology in terms of how it directly impacts me, uh, integration into aviation. How does it impact the pilot? How does it impact the controller? How does it impact the individual? How does this change? How did this ch thing change my life of how I work and how I communicate? Uh, had moments where you can't get a hold of somebody and like, man, are they not near their cell phone? And then I remember a time when my mom brought home from the state fair, our first uh, bag analog cellular phone that you plugged into the, into the ashtray. <laughs> and I'm like, man, we've come a long ways, a long ways in a, in a very short amount of time. When I think about all of that, these integrations, yes, they have this individual aspect, but when you take the actual major step back and realize, wait a minute, if every pilot in the airspace, if every operator of a spacecraft is starting to integrate these technologies, how in the world do we uh, orchestrate and operate with all of them doing this? Which really comes down to the national airspace discussion of you're not just, we're not, you're really not even just assessing what technology can help to train. It's 
we have to think differently because operations are going to be different and we have to train people who can operate in a space that looks nothing like what it looks like now because everybody in that space is going to be operating differently than they are operating right now. You know what I mean? It's like not only the problem of a problem, <laughs> but but you have a really, really great challenge. And that's why I love this discussion of, of where you started with the workforce of how do we train them better? Because if we can't train them to the operational necessity, like what are we doing? So how did that, how did that change? How did that, how was that eye opening? You said that was the most eye opening experience for you. What were some of those eye opening uh, revelations, I guess you had as you learned what we thought the workforce was into kind of what we realized the workforce is in coming into for you, the FA Academy. Well, I think there was several different aspects to that. Uh, the first was, um, the way that information is analyzed and, and transmitted amongst um, the student teams that we were working for. Um, you know, I, I come from, you know, probably, you know, in education back in the, the 80s into the 90s where we're still PowerPoint heavy in, in the way we do things. You know, uh, I still pick up the phone to call people. Yeah. But when working with the student teams, you know, it, it's all messaging. It's, it's almost all instant uh, instant connection, yeah. uh, which, which was very interesting to see. The, the second thing was um, we were working with and, and still working with the, the Price College of Business. So it was, it was very intriguing to interact with a group of students that are not uh, totally connected to the, the aerospace world. You know, they're in the business world. So it was nice to get that perspective on what that age group thought about aerospace, if they knew much about how the national airspace system worked. Mm -hmm. And it was really rewarding to, to walk through that educational process with them. And you kind of see their eyes open up on, on how connected things are and how technology has this huge potential impact to, to change things. Yeah. And uh, so it was that one, you know, it was how they actually interact was, was really neat to see. But the other thing was, is, the, the educational process of them realizing from an agency perspective, how we're identifying some of these challenges and how we're, we're actually making that student group a part of the potential solution to some of these challenges. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that, that has made this partnership really work between uh, the academy and OU is that we're giving these students real world problems and challenges that we're seeing as an organization. These are not one-off exercises. They are providing research that we are putting immediately into analysis and potentially, you know, working towards, you know, future solutions. Yeah. And I, I think that that's exciting for them and part of that educational process that they were a part of. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, I can only imagine how some of those meetings have gone when you, when you walk, when you walk into a meeting with one perception and you walk out with that perception, like bleeding on the table inside and, and, and you walk in and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm not even sure what to do at this moment because what I thought was happening was not necessarily happened. That has been my experience. Yeah. Even in a call this morning, when I was talking to a spark cell of how they were uh, 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 integrating or how they were uh, talking to commanders about um, squadron innovation funds or funding that they have to focus on innovation. The, it was something super simple. It was a virtual office space. I had never seen this thing before. And they sent me a link and said, do you want to meet in our office space? I said, sure. I assuming that's zoom or Google or whatever it is. No, no, no. There was this thing you show up and it's literally like a virtual office space and you see them walking down the hall. And he says, oh, are you going to come with me down the hall? I was like, I don't even know what to do here right now. But that's how they operate in this virtual environment so that you can conceptualize if is somebody in their office or not, instead of having to send a text message and say, hey, are you available for a quick call? You know what I mean? It, it totally changed, in that example, my mindset of how you can even virtually work with someone and right. ease the tension of having to find out, are you busy? Are you available? Like, are you in the middle of something? Hey, can you hop into this discussion over here? I, I actually did not even know what to do for about the first three minutes until my mic clicked into it. And I was actually reminded from some of the discussions that you've had about, you know, we're in these, lar these large federal entities 
that are wanting to make change. We're wanting to grow at the pace of technology and innova- uh, information and innovation. But how yeah. do you do it when my mind is literally stuck in what I know and has a hard time wrapping around where we need to go? But right. that seems like a, a connection that you've been able to make with that partnership you have. With some, uh, the, right. And, and I think school. the students, you know, we, both the undergraduate and we had a, a group of graduate students that we worked for the spring 2022 semester. Yeah. Um, they when when they are able to interact with our leadership directly, it, it becomes very obvious that there's an opportunity here to leverage the, the capabilities that these individuals bring to the table because of their immersion into technology. It's, you know, an extension of them. It's how how, you know, some of, you know, those individuals operate on a daily basis, yeah. you know, how do we bring that to the table? Um, you know, I, you know, it's, it's, I, I, and I go back to the telephone analogy. I still pick it up and call folks. Um, yeah. and, and I think that that sets me apart from someone that may be still in, in, in college where, you know, it's instant messaging. And, uh, and so it's how to leverage that different way of thinking. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what's been really exciting. But when, when they interact with our leadership uh, and, and they're able to, to frame these these challenges in, in such a way, it, 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 it immediately hits. It's like, yes, we've got to look at this. So yeah. th- those student teams have been the best uh, advocates for what we're doing. That's that's amazing. I we do have a couple of questions coming in uh, from our viewers. Kathy Reed, yes, Kathy, would you mind posting that link? It was the coolest thing that it was the coolest thing ever. If you wouldn't mind posting that link so that people can see and share, because you really just kind of need to see a demo of this. It was pretty cool. Uh, uh, Matthew did have. Uh, sorry, that was uh, let's see, that was Kathy's question. Yeah, do you want the link? Yes, we want the link. Back to uh, Matthew. Uh, it says, "What does uh, how does the FAA define innovation?" Hmm. That's a, boy, an easy one for you, huh, right? Uh, definitions matter uh, in when it comes to turn, in terms of strategic alignment. Totally fine. Uh, I mean, that's a great, great point because if I'm working on one thing, if I call if I call this an apple and you look at it and be like, dude, that's a cup with a drink. What are you talking about? But no, what are you talking about? It's an apple. Uh Right. It's hard to get aligned on anything at all when you don't even have the same baseline definition. What is what right. is innovation? Everybody has a different answer, but that is a great perspective. What, what when you think of innovation in the FAA, what does that look like? Like, what is that common vernacular discussion? Right. Well, I think we're, we're taking this at a very you know step by step, start very slow, uh, moving out on, on this journey. Mm-hmm. And, and really, when I talk about the student teams and the research, this is all part of where we're potentially starting to build a innovative training roadmap. Yeah. So we can actually define what these things mean at a strategic level, at a tactical level. Yeah. We're still at those early stages of, of, of actually defining, you know, what the scope of this is for the academy. So I, I, I don't want to put a blanket definition out there currently, what it means specifically. Uh, for what we're doing at the academy in terms of technical training, but I, I do know that you know the innovation that we we are looking at is both from the the human capital perspective and also from the technological perspective as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's a that's a stellar acknowledgement to be able to say you know we uh, well I think a lot of people especially for the Air Force, we'd gotten into innovation with AFWorks starting Spark Cells and kind of had the forward motion. And there was so much happening, it just kind of happened across uh, multiple different organizations, the squadrons, the wings. So there wasn't that step by step of, hey, this is what we're going to, this is what we're focusing on. This is how we want to focus on it. Uh, and one of the really cool things I think uh, that the FA has going for it is that you have the ability to have these lessons learned from other entities and organizations. Uh, and you're taking it in this really collaborative uh, effort of taking those lessons learned and working to see, okay, who's been here? Who's done this? Does anybody have an idea <laughs> uh, of what your lessons learned that we could learn from? It has been so amazing to be able to watch uh, you and, and your team be able to do that and work through. So how, how is it that you have been from your initial onset of trying to say, how can we integrate technology to help us train? to then learning what the, what the uh, business school students learned about the workforce and their interest in government and what does it look like for them to be integrated into the workforce as a whole? How has that shifted your perspective 
And where are you headed now with that venture? Uh, I, I think it's, it's the, the, what what's became apparent over the last, we're, we're coming up now on, you know, we've been fully engaged for, for almost, almost a full year through three semesters, is that I, I think this is a common challenge to multiple industries. Uh, you know, talking to the, the business, uh, the College of, of Business down at OU, with some of their stakeholders, some of the, the corporations that, that recruit from them, they're seeing some of these same challenges. Uh, the research pointed out, um, you know, some of the stakeholders of the, the national airspace system are seeing some of these, these same issues as well and, and how to, to get in front of this. Um, and, and talking with uh, one of the uh, representatives from the Innovation Hub at the University of Oklahoma, uh, I, I think he, he really, I think, put this in perspective. When you, when you look at this issue of technological, technological change and human capital, and how to merge these going forward. Um, he put in perspective, when you hear these discussions, you, you come away with one of two feelings. Uh, one feeling is, is that industry have solved, it's already solved all these problems. Yeah. You're behind the power curve. You're, you're left in the dust. Yeah. Or yeah. you're on the other side of the table of, you're the first one to ever have these ideas. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be the total leader of this. And so I, I think where we currently stand right now on this is that we know there's an issue that others are, are dealing with this. And when you talk to other members of other organizations, whether inside the, the federal government or, or outside within industry, um, you, you get a sense of energy behind this topic. Yeah. People want to talk about this, but you get the sense that, 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 you know, there's not a general consensus on how to tackle this, how to get your arms around that. So that's, yeah. that's why this is very exciting right now. And, but I, I think where we, where we stand right now, we're confident that we're looking in the right areas. Uh, we're looking at probably the, the technologies that will help us get through this transformational change. Yeah. Um, but yet, uh, you, you, you know that uh, this thing could take a, a turn that you do not expect. And so we're, we're going with the, into this journey with our eyes wide open, knowing that we do not want to reinvent the wheel. We're yeah. trying to learn from others through partnerships, through collaboration. And we'll just see where this goes. Yeah. Well, one of the things I do, I do want to hit on uh, real quick before we kind of close out. First off, thank you so much for joining us. It's thank been you. a joy to watch uh, and to just be part of the conversation of learning what you guys are doing, the FAA's mindset. I've learned so much about the inner, inner workings of just the how you guys collaborate and, and what that looks like for us and how we as the Air Force can do an even better job of collaborating uh, as you're doing because you guys have really figured out something cool. Um, with how you've kind of approached that. And that's one thing I want to end on is, is you have been able to formulate through partnerships, many partnerships, <laughs> like uh, you've been able to formulate collaboration with m several different people uh, of different entities, different organizations, and you're pulling these together for a focus here coming up next year, which we don't have to talk about that if we're not, re not ready to release that. But could you talk to a second for how those collaborative efforts with different organizations uh, have have grown or changed? Because a lot of times federal agencies, like we have a tendency to stick to ourselves, but you guys have really stepped out. Right. Uh, you know, it, it, it started with academia, but, you know, those those discussions and those efforts within academia led to a phone call that led us to a, another stakeholder that was interested in these partnerships yeah. or this collaboration. So I, I, I think that it, it's been a case where the energy's there and it's it's literally uh, being able to network, uh, having the the I guess the the uh, the ability to to move around these spaces so that you can reach out to to other organizations that may be facing similar challenges. And, and being able to talk about those in a collaborative way has really been, you know, one of the keys to this. Uh, we're very fortunate here in the Oklahoma City area to have the Oklahoma City Innovation District, which, you know, if, if, if their mission is to bring together, you know, large stakeholders in the community to, to face, you know, and to, uh, to address common challenges. And when you really look at how this partnership has grown, the collaboration has grown between academia and, um, and, and, and others that are involved in the effort. Uh, it's really a model of, of how the innovation district is set up to operate. Uh, we were in a meeting a couple of weeks ago 
um, related to this topic. And when you looked at the, the individuals that were attending that meeting, I kind of had to step back from the screen moment, you know, myself and go, goodness, this is what the innovation district is exactly supposed to do. When you look yeah. at who was at the table, it was yeah. really for me mind blowing who was there. Uh, but it was all about a common cause about addressing this, this technological and, and human capital change that we're, we're facing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, my gosh, there's something that, that, uh, I, 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 I didn't realize it was in this format kind of beforehand, but it's something that I've definitely learned even through this process of just kind of coming together in this is it's, and I'll put it like this. It's what I've kind of thrown out there is my aligning, uh, my align model. I'll throw it up on the screen here is like, is this that I've realized through watching you guys and just watching uh, some other people who have really done amazing collaborative partnership efforts that there's almost almost as though there's a process being followed and it's aligning this network a being a, uh, academia working with an academia partnership because it's a great kind of third party person who loves doing a research for the sake of learning they're amazing local community you talked about the Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma City Innovation District there's somebody local who is working to pull these conversations together whether it's an incubator or accelerator you know wherever you're at whatever that looks like uh, what does it look like to partner a local community? Industry obviously is involved. Not only do you have the governmental entity of the FAA, but then you have partners uh, and and uh, companies uh, and uh, associations that are very interested in what the future looks like, and they want to be part of the solution. Obviously, you have uh, the government, which is F FAA, you guys, and then you have this network that has been created that you've created by pulling these people together for a focused discussion. That is I mean, that's huge, huge. So I throw that out there, triggers a little align model for anybody who's saying, man, we, I just, we want to be able to make partnerships. We want to be able to do more of that. Uh, this is what I realized. These are all kind of the key stakeholders that you've pulled together and it's working well for you. Very well from, from my observation, I would say it's working very well. It's really, really cool. Any thoughts on that before we close out? Uh, do want to answer a couple of questions that have come up, which has been pretty cool. Any thoughts on that? Uh, uh, well, uh, the align, you know, that, that alignment model that you showed there, I mean, you can, you can assign each one of those, you know, stakeholders or, or categories to a specific part of this effort. I mean, yeah. it, it, it couldn't be any clearer that that's, that's working in this case. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, it, and it's, and, you know, and, and part of that's not, it's, it's been due to other people and some of those other uh, entities that's been helping out with this, that's been able to help us put some of this together. So I don't take credit for all that. I, I've, we've been really in a fortunate situation where others have been through this before and is, is able to provide some guidance. So uh, I don't want to take credit for all of that. There's been multiple individuals with a lot more experience than I that's been able to help guide us through this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I realize there's, there's the humble brag there. I know it takes a, it takes a village to be able to get something uh, done and, uh, you know, amazing uh, done across the, uh, across the not only innovation the ecosystem for you guys but also just kind of the government as a whole uh but the amazing thing is that man it's happening i mean it's continuing moving forward by people just like you michael that are making the effort making the intentionality of saying you know what we can keep driving forward kathy reed said uh great perspective would love to collaborate with the fa innovation pocs uh which is really cool and that's the kind of the parting shot i'll leave with everybody i know there's a lot of people down at ITSEC this week uh doing exactly that that collaboration of industry of coming together of industry and government uh, of academia sharing what they've learned um, but this is a really cool of what happens next. So yes, there's collaboration. Yes, there's this workforce development. How do we train the future? How do we integrate technology? Really, really cool thing is that uh, we recently had a, uh, a team come through the refinery, um, which is, uh, you know, accelerating, incubating those ideas for, for the Air Force. And one of the things they had done was work with uh, the FAA and local air traffic control towers to be able to uh, expedite the time that emergency response vehicles can get across runway to the emergency aircraft decreased it from what I was reading in the email decrease it was able to decrease response time by like 70%. That's massive. That's huge. All because partnerships are happening. People are working together. Michael, you started a, you started something great here. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> just just one of many. I, I'll follow the lead of multiple others. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm just a fan, so I'll give you the credit for it today. <laughs> Michael, thank you. thank you so much for uh, for being with us today, uh, especially on uh, Morpheus on Winning Wednesday to share the wins not only across the Air Force, but also uh, across the government as a whole. So to our FAA uh, brothers and sisters out there, thank you so much for your efforts. Thanks so much for teaching as much as you're learning uh, and thanks for including us, the Air Force, in the, in the great lessons learned that you guys are doing. And keep up the great work. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. I look forward to the future. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. Uh, for all of you out there, thank you so incredibly much uh, for tuning in today, Winning Wednesday, uh, with Morpheus, your strategic innovation team, nestled right in the strategic studies group for the chief of staff of the Air Force and vice chief. Uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind. Not only are we at the edge of innovation, but you are too. Listen, great things happen because people just like you make them happen. So if you have great stories of uh, what's taking place uh, there in your innovation ecosystem, whether it's local or whether it's uh, a, you know at a larger level, let us know. We want to know about it. You can do that by uh, not only reaching us, uh, reaching out to us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of those places, uh, but also you can actually go to the website right here, MorpheusAF.com. Your opportunity to be able to go there, send us a message, send us a note, or you can just message us right wherever you're watching this. So friends, we will see you on Fail Fast Friday, where we value the importance of lessons learned. And if you fail, you know what? That's an opportunity to succeed in the future. Join us. We'll see you Friday for Fail Fast Friday right here with your strategic innovation team, Morpheus. See you next time, friends. See you on Friday.